Well, welcome. Welcome to today's webinar from Bob Benny Wealth Management. I'm Bob Benny, a uh, certified financial planner, uh, owner of Bob Benny Wealth Management. Uh, over here, here <laughs> is my daughter, Jessie. She's a financial advisor here also. We have a special guest, Lois Kometcher, a uh, local realtor, one of the top realtors in, in the city of Lincoln. And uh, our topic today is real estate as an investment, particularly income producing uh, real estate. Um, Jesse, will you tell people how to ask questions on the webinar? Yep, there's a chat box at the bottom of your screen. So if you think of any questions uh, while we're going through everything, we'll address all of those at the end. So feel free to type in your questions whenever you want. We won't address them until the end. Um, but so Lois, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? All righty. I've been in the business since 2009. Um, moved to Lincoln, kind of didn't have many leads. So had to make the leads, open houses every Sunday, that kind of thing. Um, I love the real estate business. Sometimes I don't know why, because you get a little beat up, but I do love it. I meet a lot of really cool people that I've helped and remained friends with. And it's just taken off since then. And as a little disclosure, I knew Lois before she became a realtor. And she was a client and a friend. And uh, then, you know, told me she decided she wanted to become a realtor. And I know real the real estate business very competitive, is very competitive. And I thought, ah, good luck to you. And she just took off. And she took off mostly because she just worked her tail off and is honest and takes care of people. In fact, um, uh, a family member just <laughs> recently uh, bought a new, Jesse and her husband Trevor just used you to buy a new home for themselves and yep. sell their home. And that went real well. And and uh, we were gonna have you on the webinar, even though that, <laughs> right. you, you know, anyway. But, He's uh, lying, it was a test. <laughs> <laughs> but Lois, what's your outlook for for the real estate market in this year, 2022? So far, the market is very strong. Um, I'm helping a young couple right now. They're looking in the 250-ish range. We have written two offers we lost on. We went 20,000 over on them. Um, we're going out again tomorrow. We were out this morning. So the market is still there. Um, I think all the commotion with the interest rates raising has got people a little scared that they want to find one now. Um, back in 2008, 2009, with the crunch, the builders held back on their new construction building. So that cut back on the available houses out there. So we're still kind of catching up from that panic there. So um, I think it's going to be strong. Well, and you know, you, you brought something up about interest rates, and, and this was some advice that I gave uh, Jesse and Trevor, and that I've given a lot of, of couples or, or individuals that have told me, particularly in the last year or so, that they're thinking about upgrading a house or something like that, and that maybe they're, I mean, I've had some people, a number of people say, I'm thinking about, you know, maybe uh, upgrading my house in the next three to five years. And I've urged them to upgrade their house now. You never catch up. <laughs> in three to five years, the house prices are going to be higher, yes. a lot higher, I mm -hmm. think. And interest rates are going to be higher. So yeah. that, you know, that house that you kind of have your eye on right now, that's let's say 250,000 right now, three to five years, it might be 350 or 400,000. And interest rates now being in the two and a half to three, three and a half percent rate. So let's say three, three and a half for mortgages might be six or eight or even higher in three yep. to five years. So not that we're talking about, I mean, it might be of interest to some of the people that are on the webinar, but the, the purpose of the webinar is real estate as an investment, particularly as an income producing uh, investment. I've been talking to people in the last, several months, almost a year, about that the, the greatest threat to all Americans, let alone investors, 
is this super high inflation. This I call it hyperinflation, um, and that there are bad places to have your money when they're, when you're facing high inflation or hyperinflation. There's three bad places and three good places. And people that have watched some of our other webinars have heard me talk about this. The three bad places are 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 cash, including savings and checking, um, and and just regular cash CDs that don't pay anything and bonds. Those are the bad places to have investments, to have your money now, because you're going to lose buying power mm -hmm. when we have this at least 10% inflation this year. The three good places to have investments, if you think about the definition of inflation being the rising cost of goods and services, the best hedge, I think, for inflation is to own the companies that produce and sell the goods and services whose prices are coming up. It just makes logical sense. Another good hedge for inflation is income producing real estate. Real estate is own, I mean, you, you, your house is going to go up in value, but it, you, you can't take money out of your house unless you have a rental house, and that's what we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. And then gold, and I don't like gold as much, but we're here today to talk with Lois and have her give us some insight on the, the second one that I mentioned, income uh, producing real estate. And it, it protects against inflation by the, the rising value of the inflation and, and, you know, or the rising value of the home or the apartment or whatever it is, farmland. Mm -hmm. Farmland's a good investment too. It's going to go up in value with the inflation, but the rent's also going to go up in value over time with the inflation. So, um, Lois, does real estate always go up in value? History, it has. It has gone down. Um, it probably doesn't stay down as long as it historically raises. So, yes, 2008, it did go. It took a drop. Yeah, and in different areas of the country, sometimes it takes big drops, mm -hmm. you know, at, at times. It doesn't go up straight up in value. Sometimes we perceive that real estate's going straight up in value because our price points are far apart. Like a neighbor sells a house and then another neighbor sells a house for more money a couple of years later. Or we get our assessments, which always go up in value too. But they're periodic. It's a one, one every year or two or three, we get an assessment or have an appraisal done. But the, the actual volatility of real estate day to day can be quite, quite volatile. It hasn't been recently because it's been a very demand is there. a very high, high uh, value market over the last years. Um, and prices are higher now than they were a year ago. Yes, definitely. Are they higher than they were six months ago? Yes and five years and 10 years, mm -hmm. so So if prices are high, why is now a good time to get into real estate, whether you're buying it for a personal residence or upgrading or buying it as an income producing investment? Well, the prices are probably not gonna go down. If they go down, they're going to, it's cautious in Lincoln because we don't have everything going on. You know, like you watch the news and you see the horror stories in, Arizona, how things tanked on houses and all that stuff. That doesn't happen here in Lincoln. Some of it does, but not anything like there. So um, the value of the house is going to continue to go up. Interest rates are going to be going up, um, they're telling us. So now is a good time to get in there before the interest rates go crazy, um, just so you can beat that part of it. As a uh, one of the things that Jesse's going to show us is and put on the screen is a chart of real estate values versus interest rates. There you go. So this is the, the red line on the chart is the median sales prices of houses sold in the United States. And the blue line is the 30 year fixed rate average mortgage in the United States starting clear back in the 70s. And you can see back in the 70s, as mortgage rates went up, the price, the prices of houses, show the pointer up, run the, well here I'll, I'll do it. 
over here in this time period, you know, early 70s to early 80s, when interest rates were going through the roof and 30 year mortgage rates got up to 18%. Can you imagine that? Well, it's 18%. I might've rate. paid some of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> but when that was happening, um, home values, real estate values didn't, sales prices didn't go down. They just kept going up. And then, and they've continued to go up. There's been some little dips in general, but generally it's continued to go up. So um, uh, even if you, I mean, the, the problem with rising interest rates for a, either in a person investing in income producing real estate or just trying to upgrade their house or buy a house for the first time is you may not be able to afford the mortgage in three to five years or 10 years or whatever, which if the interest rates go up like this again. Your buying power will be less. Yeah, your buying power will be less. But real estate is going to be more, income producing real estate is going to cost you more money a year from now or two or mm -hmm. five years from now. Um, so we can go back to the screen now. So um, how do most landlords finance purchases of income producing real estate? So when you go to the bank, it depends on your situation, um, how much equity you have, um, you know, at the bank, all that, you know, how many, your house and all that stuff, where you're at with life financially. So you can do a portfolio, which they'll give you X amount of dollars and you can buy three or four investments and put them in that portfolio or you can do them separately. Um, when I started with the investment part, I had to have two years of investment rental landlord experience before it, my loan could get sold on the secondary market. So I went- Because you, we didn't mention that, you own some yep. income producing real estate yourself. Yep. I have a couple of them. So I, was not able to sell mine in the secondary market. So at that time, I just did an arm knowing that I was going to sell that property before the interest rates were going to go up, which I did. So um, otherwise, people, if you got a lot of equity in your house, you can take the equity out of your house. Your interest rate on your house is going to be lower than your investment. Right. So you can take the equity out of there and use that. Um, what, what she's talking about here is either financing or refinancing your house, which you can get the, the lowest um, interest rate is on mm -hmm. a 15 or a 30 year uh, fixed rate mortgage. That's the lowest money you can borrow right now in the world. And, and uh, uh, you know, if you had, say you had a house paid off that was worth $400,000, you could borrow $320,000 out of that mm -hmm. at a fixed interest rate for 15 or 30 years. And you could use that money to purchase an income producing yep. real estate. Which Bob actually talked me into doing last year. And I did it. I listened. <laughs> so I refinanced my house at 2.8% where I was paying a little over 4% on my rental. I guess I forgot that we talked about that. I'm glad yeah. you took my advice. And, and you're fixed at that. Yes. Unlike most banks are going to loan money for, for a, 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 an income producing rental property at a shorter amount of term mm -hmm. and, a, and a variable rate mortgage. Right. right. You can get them. Uh, if you're in a financial position, you can sell them on the secondary market. It depends on your credit score and all that. You pretty much yeah. have to go talk to your bank and right. see where, what's best for you to do. So what advice do you, do you have for people considering buying income producing real estate that are watching our webinar today? Um, go for it. It's one of those things where Yes, it can be scary. You hear the horror stories. Um, it kind of depends on which price point you buy into as what kind of horror stories you have. 
Um, my first one when I started was one that I had some horror stories, but you mean horror stories with tenants <laughs> with tenants. <Yeah>. Yes. <laughs> one ran over the bathtub, flooded the place. Um, those kind of things you just, <laughs> yeah. and that's, that's the, you're, you're talking about the lower price yep. rentals where you, they were yeah. like, uh, four or 500. They were just one bedroom, a fourplex. So you're going to have that kind of stuff when you have. Um, you know, your tenants for whatever reason are just in that position. So, um, uh, the ones that I have now are higher price points. So I don't have the issues that I had before. I'm not saying that I can't have those issues. I, they can come up, but, mm -hmm. um, I think it's, you just have to find the niche where you want to be. There's some people that do investments that, know how to go in they'll maybe fix up the place and then rent it out um, if it needs some work or um, they have a team that they work with so they're not scared to go in and fix things up because they're on the payroll anyway if you don't want to manage it there's places that'll manage them for you um, how i rent mine i go on zillow I can put them on there for free right before COVID they were going to charge for it, but they never did. Um, so I put them on Zillow. Um, tenants can go, they send me a message through Zillow. So they don't even have my information. So they can send me a message. I go show them the place. And then if it's something they want to put in an application, they do it right there on Zillow and they pay $29 for um, the background check and it sends it to me. Um, you sign in with your social security number, it's secure. It's and pretty so, slick. Yeah, it's pretty slick. Yeah. Isn't it amazing how technology just explodes yeah. and we can do things so yep. easy compared to... Mm -hmm. So uh, you had a story that you mentioned before we uh, started the webinar that was kind of interesting and I thought and that I wanted you to share about some a, a, a person that yeah. you... You helped with, yeah. and, and it has to do with this idea too, in of what I started talking about as far as the good places to have your money in a high inflation environment and the bad places mm -hmm. to have your money. And go ahead, I won't take yep. any more. Well, this guy had the money in the bank. His mom was older. Um, she was going to end up going to a nursing home. So he took the cash he had and the cash she had, and they combined it and bought a, um, I'm not sure how many doors it had. It was an apartment. I had 12 flex maybe. And the income off of that was 6,000 a month. So that paid her way through the nursing home until she passed. And then once she passed, he kept it for a while and then he sold it and made money on it. So there was enough funds to pay her way all the th way through. You kind of have to think outside the box on some of the investments. Well, and that's, you know, I mean, if, if, they had left that money in the bank, they would have been depleting principal because the interest oh, yeah. they were making would not have been enough to pay for her, her nursing home care. Nope. And then because it was a real estate and ownership type of investment, ownership investments like companies and real estate mm -hmm. are what goes, go up in value with high inflation because it was an ownership investment when it all got said and done and he sold the Mm -hmm. the apartment complex um he made money on that too right yeah he made money there yeah yep so it was a win-win all the way around so how you're an agent of course you how important is it to use an agent i know that with the experience that um my family recently had or jesse had with that it was it was very important, very useful. Um, you tell us or tell me how important is it to use an agent in today's real estate market? Well, when you're buying, so the seller pays the commission. So when you're buying, you pay a 495 office charge and that's all that you pay. So when you're buying, there's really not that much of a charge if that's the part that's you're worried about. Um, today's market is brutal. If you went in as 
on your own, you'd probably get massacred because <laughs> there's all kinds of tricks that we have, not really tricks, but um, things that we can do to write up the offer, to get it accepted, to make it look better, um, help you through the inspections. If something comes up in the inspection, um, if you're buying an old, older property, um, I can get a structural engineer in there, got one. Um, if it's an older neighborhood, you need the sewer scope, got somebody that can do that. All of those kind of things. There's, um, I always tell people, I can't tell you how we're going to react until it happens, but there's always a way to negotiate through and make it work for everybody if something does go wrong with the inspections or any of that kind of stuff. It's just somebody out there that does it daily that is gonna right. help people through. I just had a gentleman that I listed his town home and he's building a new construction. He told me all the way through, Lois, I'm gonna do for sale by owner. And I told him, okay. I mean, I didn't try to talk him out of it. So he got to like, about a month ago, and he's like, Lois, I really think I want you to list my town home. And so I did, and it sold, I think we sold in a week and a half. We got over asking price, and I have a text on my phone. <laughs> I will keep forever. He said, I am so glad I listed with you. I could have never done this myself. And it wasn't that hard of a deal. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's just... Um, it's just one of those things where you have somebody in there that does it daily that knows what, knows what yeah how and to I had that react. experience myself and I'm sure some of these the people watching have too this is goodness I remember it was like 25 or six years ago we still lived in Kansas is before I came up here and started this business and we had a house to sell and we hadn't owned it for that much it had gone up in value in a quick amount of time but uh we thought you know, we're going to try to put it for mm -hmm. sale by owner, put some ads in the paper. And, and we had this plan ahead of time that we're going to try to do this for a couple of months. And uh, we had a friend like you, it was a good realtor down in Manhattan, Kansas. And she just kept following up with me every couple of weeks, very just pleasantly, I call it pleasantly persistent, <laughs> very friendly, didn't try to push herself on us gave us ideas for how we could show the house or maybe clear some furniture out or whatever mm -hmm. or run ads. And then after my time was up that I told Angela, we're just going to try for this time. You know, then I listed it with uh, Carm is, was her first name. And uh, uh, she sold it in like a week or two like you did that. <laughs> and I was, we were happy as clams and I would probably never try to sell a house or buy a house myself without a realtor. So Usually it's another agent that sells the house. So our listings go out, what we call the MLS. That's where agents can go. The pictures are there, the information. And then we're tied to all Zillow and all of those um, where people that maybe aren't working with an agent look. So it's totally out there. Um, that gentleman's house, when I listed it, I think we had six showings in the first day and we went live maybe about 10 o'clock in the morning. So it gets out there. Um, and we can also set people up in, uh, in that MLS. If we have a client that's looking for houses, we can go in there and set up a search, you know, single family home price point and all of that. So they get it as soon as it comes live yeah. too. So there's a lot of things that we can do that by the time it gets through the chain, if you're not, don't have somebody helping you. Part of the thing that sped up a lot of these house sales is the market. But part of it too is the, the is technology and people able, people mm -hmm. being able to see these things and see a lot of neat pictures or even videos sometimes of yeah. of homes and all the details and everything just on their phone or on their computer and mm -hmm. they can do that for a little while and kind of get an idea of what what's out there. Right. So. Well, right before today when I came in. I was telling these guys, I had somebody call me, they wanted to see a house. And when I went to look it up, it had been on the market for five minutes. So that's how fast <laughs> they had got the email and then they text me, they wanted in. So and I just have to speak from experience. <laughs> we would not have found our house if it weren't for Lois knowing about it first and letting us, letting us know. Um, 
ahead of time and things like that and negotiating everything for us and making the whole transaction process of our new house and our old house uh, just super easy and so I don't know how we would have done it without her so thanks Jesse I think you definitely <laughs> need an agent especially Lois <laughs> that one was a no-show we also have those where agents go in and they do the paperwork but maybe they're waiting on the people to clean the house out or whatever the reason they're just not quite ready so they're not available to the public but as agents we can share them we can't show them but we can share that it's coming up so that was the one that jesse got so i think we had what like a week's notice where they could go drive by and then um, we got in the first day so yeah and i think another thing about using an agent is that you have to be ready to go like yeah, nowadays the day yeah. that you gotta be ready market. Yeah. And if you don't have someone helping you be prepared to be ready to yeah. go and and get an offer in it's yeah hard to be competitive you have to have gone to the bank that's the first step get your pre-approval yeah. get right. your finances right. figured out and we i would be happy to help in any way i can for any of our clients or prospective clients that are watching this um in helping them figure out things about financing and things like that um that's about it for our planned presentation Lois I thank you very much for coming sure Jesse what do, do we have any questions Let that came up look. oh we just had one come in what what are the pros or cons on properties sold on share sales or repossessed property auctions I don't know if they can hear you I'm gonna say it okay okay <laughs> <laughs> what are the pros or cons on properties sold on share of sales or repossessed property auctions, things that you should watch for or be concerned with that investment option? Some of those can be tricky. Um, sometimes the utilities are not on. You have to kind of be careful. You cannot turn them on. You can't do inspections. So you have to be a little cautious there and be prepared to do some repairs if something is there. Um, I guess I didn't bring it up before, but maybe, you know, like when you're thinking you're going to buy a $200,000 property, you don't need $200,000 to buy that property. You just need your down payment. So um, any kind of investment class that I've ever taken, they always told us to um, borrow the max on it and buy as much as you can for your income. <laughs> Well, and that's something that's a great point, but it's one thing that people need to keep in mind with this income producing real estate right now is that if you're financing it, unless you have some kind of a way figured out to finance it, like with equity out of your own home and getting a mortgage on your own home that's fixed for a long time, you may put yourself in a situation that in five or seven years, interest rates are going to go up and that might end up being a Mm -hmm. an issue so those are some things that yep. that people need to think about yep. and we can talk to them about yeah it kind of depends on what your financial situation is that's right. where bob comes in right he will not lead you straight right bob <laughs> try not to <laughs> not on purpose anyway so thank you very much lois for helping us with this yes, and uh, although this kind of sounded like a promotional of lois cometer real estate <laughs> agent it, it is but we're trying to give uh, you folks, the best financial advice that Jesse and I can can do, uh, can give you, uh, given my experience and her experience and our our education and licenses and and all kind of finance financial matters. So, um, if you have any any questions that come up that you'd like to to uh, email Jesse or me, uh, you is bob at bobbenny.com you can send us an email uh if you want lois's well you can give them your contact information or do you want to I, just go, come through us yeah if yeah you want to my talk email to, takes to, forever yeah if you <laughs> want difficult. if you want contact if you want to uh, reach sure lois you can find her you can go or, to my name and yeah. all my information yeah her name's real easy co-metcher <laughs> <laughs> K-O-M-E-T-S-C-H-K-O-H, yeah. 
Go ahead, spell it. It's K O H M E T S C H E R. I had everything with the H. I'm <laughs> You're sorry. close. Anyway, all you really need to do is, is contact us. Call our office at 402 421 2626 or email us at bob at bobbenny.com or go on the website and get us, reach us that way. And we'll help you get in contact with Lois if you need her or answer any other kind of questions you have about income producing real estate or any other financial matters, including uh, what's going on in the stock market or economy or any of that. So thank you very much for attending and we'll see you next month. Thank you. Thank you.